Hi guys, I am new to YouTube. Please subscribe to my channel, Sophia Franklin, and let's get into the fucking episode. Woo woo! Hey everybody, welcome to Sophia with an F. I am recording from Nashville, Tennessee. I've always wanted to come here. I'm so fucking excited to be here. I can't wait to buy cowgirl boots. That's the real reason I fucking came. <laughs> I'm fucking kidding. The real reason I came is Bunny, who is my guest today. Hi, Bunny. Hey, baby. Hi, babe. <laughs> How are you? I'm really, really good. I was just on Bunny's podcast, The Dumb Blonde Podcast. Yes. We had a really amazing episode. And before we really dive in, I just need to give a little backstory because I got into Nashville yesterday. I'm sitting at my Airbnb. I'm like working on my laptop. And all of a sudden I see you on the television. <laughs> and I'm like, who is this bitch? Like, hi, I'm with a celebrity. You're so fucking famous. Yeah. What was that about? You were in a music video with your boyfriend or your husband. Yeah. So my husband is Jelly Roll. Mm -hmm. um, he just did a collab with Brantley Gilbert. So I think the video that you saw was um, Son of the Dirty South uh -huh. with Brantley Gilbert. So if you guys haven't heard that song. Go download it, stream it, play it, listen to it. I okay. <laughs> and go watch the video because I'm in it. <laughs> I, I was love, a video vixen. <laughs> I love a girl who stands her man like that. Aww, Do you ever get annoyed yeah. when people refer to you or they're like, you're Jelly Roll's wife? Yes, I hate that. Annoying as fuck, right? Yeah, it drives me crazy, which is why I have my own brand, which is the Bunny XO brand, the Dumb Blonde podcast and stuff like that because... When I first got with Jay, everybody used to say, oh, she's a gold digger. You know, she's only with him for money. When when we first got together, he didn't have anything. Okay. I, I was the one. He was sleeping on my couch. And <sighs> he's done so many interviews. He just did the Burt Kreischer interview um, where he was talking about, you know, how we met and stuff like that. And, um, you know, when we first got together, I was just like, I don't want to just be a musician's wife. I want to be. There's so much more to me. So many layers. I'm like a. Taco Bell seven layer burrito the, you without are, the beans. <laughs> <laughs> you are like a cat who's lived like has nine lives. Except yes. you have like 50 lives. Yeah, no, it's crazy. Because I did a deep dive uh -oh. and you are. <laughs> uh oh, <laughs> your husband. Incredible. Love him. Amazing. Yeah. But you are a hundred times more interesting to me. No offense to your husband. Aww. He's incredible. We love daddy. Shout out daddy. We do. Daddy. I daddy. love that. I call him daddy roll. Daddy roll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hi, daddy roll. But yeah. you are fascinating because mm -hmm. you have this extremely successful podcast. You're an extremely successful businesswoman. You have like millions of followers between Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, what have you. And you've came a long way yeah. from what I've gathered. From being a Vegas hoe. <laughs> <laughs> I love you for that. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. I really appreciate you saying that because a lot of women want to be complimented on how they look. I want to be complimented on things I've accomplished. Like, that's my kink. Okay, mic drop and interview <laughs> over and let's just fucking go. Can I, I have that clip that. for my TikTok? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I fucking love that and... Because you're so successful, I want to talk about and kind of like back it up mm -hmm. how it started. Okay. Um, like, where do you want to start from the beginning? Or? From the beginning. Like <laughs> okay. your upbringing, like from the very beginning. Okay. Um, so I was born in Houston and um, grew up in Vegas. My family moved there when I was like five. So I literally am a West Coast girl through and through. Mm -hmm. West Coast is the best coast, baby. <laughs> um grew up in a really my actually what happened was my dad was a musician so funny I married a musician because oh, interesting he was a musician and you know we kind of lived the rock and roll lifestyle all the way until I was 12 years old and then they became um serious uh bible thumpers like super strict Pentecostal I could only I couldn't listen to secular music I couldn't watch anything that wasn't rated G if it was rated above G on the movie scale I wasn't allowed Stop. to watch it so, okay, so your family was kind of living like this rock and roll lifestyle mm -hmm. and then just did a complete 180. Did a complete like 180, yeah. My dad wow. was an alcoholic and I think he might have cheated a few times. That's his repertoire. Shout out Bill. We love Bill. Bill? <laughs> <laughs> Bill's been on the podcast too. He is, to this day, my dad is almost, he's going to kill me for saying this. My dad's almost 80 years old. 
he is macking hoes and chilling. I mean, oh, he is fucking bitches left and right. He's got a girlfriend who's like 30 years. She's only 10 years older than me. Like, it's crazy. Okay, Bill needs to come on to you then. Dad's got the sauce. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Is that gross to say? (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) No, it's hot. Shout out, Bill. We love Bill. (laughs) Tell tell me what's good with Bill. Okay. Besides that he's my future (laughs) ex-husband. Yeah. Because he said he'll be into it. Listen, dad would love you. You are right up dad's alley. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, we grew I grew up living like the rock and roll lifestyle. My dad, you know, I would ha- I would fall asleep with my dad's band playing across the room for me. There was sex, drugs, rock and roll. There was porn on TV all the time. Like it was crazy. Like if I could just paint a picture for you like that. Holy shit. Yeah, and how old are you? When this oh, is I happening? was five fucking just rocking and rolling. Okay. I remember I came in one time from like playing outside. I think I shoved a rock up my nose or something. And there was full on porn on the TV, like just Holy, okay. some chick getting banged out, you know? And mm-hmm. of course, when you're that young, you, you don't, don't understand. Right. And then as you get older, you're like, oh, you little dirty dogs. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's fine. Um, it, you know, my lifestyle, that lifestyle molded me into the woman that I am. And I think um, I was more attracted to the darker side, the seedier side of life than I was like the square side of life. Yeah. So when my parents made this hold change whenever I turned fucking 12 it was really hard for me right like I had an abusive stepmom she was you know I have to like how you said on my podcast Mm -hmm. um silver lining the way I look at it is you know my mom my stepmom taught me how to be a woman she taught me to do my makeup she taught me to do my hair she taught me how to cook and how to keep a house and stuff like that but on the flip side she was also extremely verbally abusive put my Mm -hmm. head through walls and fucking I literally had to fist fight a fucking 510 cowgirl all the time from Texas. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So, so so I feel like similar to me in a way, you had to be an adult when you were a little kid. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. And do you feel like that has contributed to how you are today? I think it has made me um, not have a victim mentality because mm. I don't like wallowing, I guess you could say. And so for that, I'm thankful because I could have gone the other way. You know, like we also have talked about previously is, um, you know, a lot of people, when things happen to them as children, you can either internalize it or you can externalize it. And I think I kind of used it as like my power to like get the fuck out. So I left home when I was 14. 14 Mm -hmm. is insane. Yeah, I never went back. Because you're, I mean, what, a freshman in high school or, like, Mm -hmm. middle school when you're 14, you left? I was going into, I was uh, in my freshman year, I left. And you left. Mm -hmm. It's so interesting. You mentioned um, how you don't think wallowing and what's happened to you is beneficial in any way. You said something, and I'm going to misquote you and you can correct me. You were like, for every brick that has been thrown at me, I use them to stand on. Yeah. I butchered that 100%. Yeah. <laughs> no, pretty much. I've said that. And I've also said every brick that is thrown at us, we've used to build our empire. Yes. Yeah. So what is your view? Because when you talk about wallowing after trauma, it's like you said something about how you shouldn't spend too much time wallowing. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And can you elaborate a little bit on that? Because mm-hmm. I think that's very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. So I have a rule. Um, my manager knows this too. If something upsets me or I get mad or upset about something, I give myself 24 to 48 hours to fucking wallow in my misery, to fucking cry about it, kick about it, scream about it, fucking cuss it out, Mm -hmm. beat it to death. But when that 24 to 48 hours is up, you get the fuck up and you tell life it hits like a bitch. You literally have to do that. If not, your sadness or your anger is going to consume you. And what the fuck is productive about that? Right. 24 to 48 hours is a pretty quick turnaround. Mm -hmm. If you think about it. I mean, for like serious, serious trauma, like, do you still have that rule? So it depends. Like, I mean, are you talking like, you know, it depends. So I'm talking about like breakups. I'm talking about like, maybe I would say superficial trauma. Like if there's Mm -hmm. something going on, like where you're getting raped or, you know, I was in an abusive relationship. It took me six years to heal from that, but I didn't wallow in it. Yes. I used it as 
I think it's okay to feel sorry for yourself Mm -hmm. for 24 to 48 hours. And then after that, you need to figure it out. Like, are you going to let this make you or break you? Right. You know, so I think there's a turning point whenever something traumatic happens to you. Yes, you need to feel it. Yes, you need to go through it. But if you keep repeating it in your mind, you're going to condition your mind to want to just feel sorry for yourself. Yeah. So it's like, I, I think it just depends. It's a case by case basis for sure, because there is some fucked up shit that has happened in this world, mm-hmm. you know, and 24 to 48 hours. Yes. is a short amount of time, but, but know. I mean, I think what you're saying is you're not necessarily healed. Right. 24 to 48 right. hours. No, after. no, no, never. It's you've made like a conscious decision to, to not let let's it break work you. On it. Yeah, exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. To move forward. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, I actually, I totally agree with that. I think you can have a certain amount of time where you just lay in your bed or whatever. And it's yeah. like, nothing will help me. I just want to sit in this sadness, depression. Mm-hmm. But eventually, 48 hours later, you need to start making moves. Even if you don't feel healed, even Absolutely. if you don't feel ready to. Yeah. Because that's what's going to get you healed. Absolutely. When you're depressed, they say the the number one thing is to get up and get fucking moving. Mm-hmm. Because when you sit there and you, I'm like the, like when I get depressed, because I, I, I battle severe depression too, suicidal ideation and all that stuff. When a lot of people like to sit in that feeling. Yeah. I don't know how people do that because I don't want to be there. Like it's mm-hmm. scary in that fucking time. You know, I want to get up, put fucking makeup on, go to work, do something to take my mind off of it and be productive because when you're productive, you're working towards a goal. So that kind of is like an adrenaline rush. It gets the serotonin going, you know, right. whereas if you just sit there and you just think about how miserable you feel over and over again, you get on a loop. Yeah, you know, and that's, a never ending loop. Yeah, that's think, not healthy. No, not at all. And thank you so much for sharing that. I would love to ask you because, I mean, I've definitely gone through severe depression before in my life. I think a lot of people listening have. And the issue is getting that like umph to actually get up, act, get up, act on it, do something. How do you how do you even get that? I mean, you have to, it's either you fuck it, it's kill or be killed, you know? Mm. And it's like, I think, you know, a lot of people probably might not agree with my outlook on things like that, but the way I look at it is like, you can't let something consume you because you could end up making a permanent decision based on temporary emotions, Mm. you know? And that is not a good thing. You want to try to pull yourself out of it. So it's crazy. Like even on my most depressed days, if I get up and go get my ass on the stair stepper yep. or even fucking walk on the treadmill for 10 minutes, yep. I feel so much better. I don't feel completely better, mm-hmm. but I feel like in that moment of time, at least I did something to better myself. Yeah. Taking a shower, fucking doing the a shower. S- Dude, I, I love the shower. I swear to God. <laughs> yeah. Like, I always <laughs> sound so disgusting because it's like, bitch, you shower, but like, It completely can do a 180 for your mood, for your day. It's cleansing. And they even say, like, a lot of people who believe in, like, manifestation and stuff like that, when you go into the shower, if you close your eyes and you just kind of um, meditate and you just picture... Outer body. The water just rinsing off that sadness, rinsing off that anger, just letting go. Water is so healing. It is. And just to visualize that helps a lot, too. I wasn't into manifestation until this year because I've been working with my coach, Glenn Cohen. He's fucking amazing. Um, If you guys ever need um, a therapist, he's fucking awesome. Um, I never realized the power of meditation. Yeah. It's really amazing because I could never turn my thoughts off to sit there and actually like meditate and, you know, fucking get lost in myself. But I've been doing it with him and it's really an amazing journey. So meditation, you've recently started doing that and that's made a big change. Oh yeah, for sure. What kind of meditation do you do? Because I've recently started implementing that as well. So I don't know the name of it, but the way that this um, therapy is that I've been doing is he has his own method of everything that he does. And what it is, is we, I close my eyes, he counts to 10. We meditate back to like certain parts of my childhood and like Mm. going back and seeing the child um, me talking to the child, me meeting, yeah. uh, my pods, which is, um, I don't want to give away too much because it's like his sauce <laughs> and his formula, but like, you know, as a child, we, we get implemented with pods from every traumatic thing that happens to us. 
And um, we like a pod could be like um, critical thinker, um, overachiever, um, mm. you know, violence. I'm a very violent person. That's one of my pods, you know. Oh. So it's like we go back to those and we see where that pod first started and we you know we meet them where they're at and then kind of just yeah. walk through your life like it's crazy yeah talking to your inner child mm -hmm. that's I mean maybe he does it a little bit different but mm -hmm. that's like what I, I mean I've definitely done that in therapy violent what do you mean when you say you're a very <laughs> very violent person well I was raised in violence you okay know? so my stepmother was extremely violent um I had to fight my whole life mm. You know, so, of course, being a child who was abused, which is what it was, and I hate saying that because it makes me sound like a victim. Um, but it doesn't, right? Which which I'm learning at the same time is, like, when I talk about, oh, I had somewhat of a traumatic childhood or whatever, I think, and when I look at you, Bunny, it's so much more just a testimony to how resilient and how beautiful of a human you are I mean look at you now I mm -hmm. think it's it's not really a sob story it's yeah. like you can you can deal with shit and fucking turn it into whatever you want yeah I appreciate that yeah um so yeah you know growing up in a violent home of course you know I was an angry child because I wasn't being heard at home anytime I had an opinion I got it got snuffed out with you know violence so I fought in school I got kicked out of numerous private schools for fighting I got kicked out of fucking public school for fighting I actually got kicked out of high school for fighting because I punched the um, principal Mr. Gunderson Stop. <laughs> well he got in between a fight and I blacked okay. out <laughs> and this that guy was 400 pounds and he sat on me so I was pissed and I was swinging you know and he was just like Alyssa you know it's my name you cannot like we can't do this anymore it's your junior year you're fighting everybody like yeah just go home right <laughs> you know which I mean some people would see that as an issue I think that's like actually pretty incredible of you <laughs> to be honest you like, used to beat everybody up you big fucking bully I think it's amazing <laughs> no I think it's a lot of people you know you were you were being active right oh, yeah similar to <laughs> <laughs> yeah very <laughs> but like similar to how you deal with um feelings of like severe depression and stuff yeah. you act I think yeah. that's a huge thing yeah I think it's my Aries moon I'm a fighter is Just that what always. it is yeah I'm not saying like punch people in the face and like that's how you deal with shit but you know you were doing something about your feelings yeah. which I think yeah. is lovely <laughs> yeah I'm one of those they made those fucking rooms what are they called the smash rooms for people oh, like yeah. me <laughs> those were designed for people like me for yeah. sure and it's you know violence is never the answer no <laughs> guys no it's never the answer. I have to <laughs> give that as a disclaimer, but God, is it fun. Yeah. <laughs> I fight it every day. Literally, my I'm really good friends with Viking Barbie. Um, I don't know if you guys know who she is on Instagram, Kaylee. She's one of my really good friends. And literally, I'll message her every day, and I'll just be like, I'm going to punch this bitch. And I she's like, you're going to go meditate. <laughs> go meditate. It's not for the It's not for the good of the overall purpose. And I'm just like, oh, but it is. <laughs> yeah. No, I remember being in high school. I've gotten a few cat fights girl fights in my day mm -hmm. and I wasn't any good no. and I, I would always get my ass beat 100% oh, no. I would just go for the hair oh yeah like I didn't know yeah. how to fucking fight so I was always <laughs> I always looked up to the girls who knew what the fuck they were doing yeah well no I got I got beat up the first time I ever got in a fight I got jumped by three girls and oh, I went shit. home and Bill was like no bitch no, my daughter's not gonna lose so he took me out in the backyard for two weeks and whooped my ass taught me how to fight and was like Stop. he would put his hands up hit me hit me hit me and for two weeks he was just like now if somebody Holy ever shit. comes at you again this is what you do of course he created a monster because <laughs> I became the bully you know yeah which is never good being a bully is never a good thing no yeah but but I see you more as like fighter Christina Aguilera like that song <laughs> yeah. that's a vibe yeah. I get I never started them I just finished them that was the thing okay yeah I like that <laughs> I mean, Bill, I don't, I mean, maybe that wasn't the best way, but also like in a way, like congrat, like high five Bill, you yeah. know? Well, he didn't raise a pussy and that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> we love Bill and Bill actually is the reason I got into my line of work because he was always just like men are trash. Mm. Don't ever depend on a man. Yep have your own shit yep if you're gonna marry marry for money and my dad has you know always told me that and I was just like I'm not 
I'm not going to marry people for money. Like yeah. that's fucking, I can't do that. That's not me, you know, but I will be like Robin Hood and steal from the rich and give to the poor. <laughs> and the poor was me. So <laughs> Okay. I need you to elaborate on that. So, okay. Um, well, <laughs> <laughs> Robin Hood, give us, give us the tea. Robin. So I always felt like if these men are going to cheat on their wives mm-hmm. and they're going to trick off money on females, then they deserve to have their money taken from them. Yeah. Like I, I'm doing a service for the good of the people, you know, Mm -hmm. (laughs) like if you want to give me all your money, okay, fine. You know? And a lot of times whenever you're in uh, that line of work, you don't end up having sex with the people. Of course you do have to have sex with some of your clients and stuff like that. Or like your sugar daddies who are paying a lot of money, but right. Wait, let's back up really fast. Your line of work. What do you mean when you say that? So when I was 21, my, well, actually when I was 18, one of my boyfriends cheated on me with a stripper. I was working a regular job and like barely even making fucking ends meet. I grew up in Vegas. All my girls were dancers by the time they were 18. Mm. You know, I was the only one who tried to have a moral compass because of religious trauma. Right. And you know, you were at Target. Right. So (laughs) I tried to fucking work a regular job. I did real estate. I did, you know, I just fucking did whatever I could to make ends meet. I was like a waitress at Shoney's. I did everything I could. And one of my best friends, Tasha, went with me to pick up one of my paychecks. She was like, you know, I make that in two weeks. And I was just like, dude, what do you mean? And then my ex cheated on me with a stripper. So I was mm. like, oh, well, if you're going to cheat on me with a stripper, if she can do it, I can do it better. Yeah. You know, so I went <laughs> to my first um, gig at Cheetahs when I was 18. I get on the floor. I'm fucking f- farting. <laughs> wait, wait, I'm what? so nervous. <laughs> you know how like you get like bubble guts because you're like so fucking nervous. I thought you were gonna say twerking. No, no, and you're I like was farting, farting. <laughs> up a storm. Oh, and that was the smelly one too. It was terrible. <laughs> and I walk out on the floor, and the first thing this guy says to me is, "I'll give you seven hundred dollars to kick me in my balls." what now I would do that in a heartbeat but I was so green and so innocent back then that I was like no like I can't do this and I like ran to the dressing room did not go back to a club till I was 21 wow ended up going back to a strip club danced for 11 years and then of course you know dancing always turns into uh you know you meet your customers and you start meeting them outside of the club and it's just a lifestyle in Vegas literally being a working girl is a lifestyle and there's levels to it Mm. you know there's like track hoes there's high class hoes there's um girls that work walk the carpet which are the girls who only work the casinos a (laughs) track track hoes would be the girls who only work on the track like trop and uh las vegas boulevard area um so service hoes (laughs) i love how you're saying this all casual i'm like i've heard of like the hierarchy of hoeing i've heard sugar baby escort prostitute okay they're all the same thing but you're saying some shit i yeah when you said girls that walk the carpet i'm like like the runway yeah like what, <laughs> yeah like bendy, i mean yeah it could be considered a runway <laughs> <laughs> so please explain to me like the differences yeah i will for sure so just so everybody's clear sugar babies high class escorts uh, uh, what was the other one that you said? Um, Prostitute. Prostitutes were all the same thing. It's sex work. It's sex work. Yeah. It's sex work. Yeah. But there's levels to this shit. You know, there's girls that will sleep with you for a hundred dollars and there's girls that'll sleep with you for $10,000. Mm-hmm. It just depends. You put your value on yourself. Right. You know, I always held myself to a higher standard, maybe because Bill taught me <laughs> to do that. Thank, thank, thank God for Bill. Right. Thank God for Bill. We love Bill. <laughs> um, but you know, there's girls. So in Vegas, they have the track, which is like you guys saw your first track hoe. They didn't believe me about track hoes. What the hell is a track hoe? <laughs> I'm like, wait, what? So a track hoe is a girl who gets it by any means. She does car dates. She'll, you mm. know, sleep with you at the like the weeklies. Um, you know, like budget suite stuff like that. And those girls are fucking hustlers, man. They go out and get it. And okay. they risk their fucking lives every day. Like those girl, I shout out to those girls because they're really putting in the work and th- th- those bitches are fucking savages. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, th- there's those that we have girls that are service hoes in Vegas. So there's, um, 
I don't know if you've ever been on the Vegas Strip and they're clapping the things like this and they have yeah. the, the the things of the naked girls on them. Yes. Like that. So that's that's services. Oh. So what it is is it's a service that people own that um, employ girls such as myself or um, other girls. And what they do is they book the calls for you. They mm. take a huge percentage from you. But they'll book the calls for you and they'll send you on these calls. They're not always safe. A lot of girls get arrested because, you know, it's hard to it depends on the type of phone girl you have. If the phone girl's cool, then normally she'll have your back and won't send you to a fucked up thing. But um, mm. so you go and you collect a fee and then you try to work out what you're going to make off of them on top of the fee. And then you have to give the service 50 percent of whatever you make. 50% 50% is fucking shit time. 50 percent on top of um having to tip them too it's a it's a huge scam yeah that's so, just, that's ridiculous I only did that I only worked for a service if it was super slow and like I needed just the I needed their advertisement you know got it I always just wanted to do it on my own and then there's the the online hose which is like me so okay. like, I would do like the eros I of course there's back page and stuff like that there's levels to the shit with the online hose there's like it's a whole back dynasty pages, yeah back pages <laughs> isn't a thing anymore right no it's not thank god because it was really unsafe I was never on back page but mm. there was so much scams and back page was equivalent to I don't want to get in, any any of my my fellow hoes mad at me when I say this but a bag page was kind of equivalent to the track hoes and the girls who walk the carpet you mm-hmm. know there it was kind of like low ball and yeah you know, whatever you could get out of them you can I mean everybody's hustling right. we're not knocking anybody's hustle everybody's mm-hmm. fucking just trying to make a dollar you know right but there's levels yeah there's and, levels. and I think that's fair to say yeah absolutely and so I, I would uh, put my own ads up and screen my own calls and set my own price and yeah, I wouldn't even get out of bed for less than five thousand dollars. You know, that's a shit ton of money. Oh yeah, no, and it's crazy because people don't believe it, but my husband saw it firsthand. Literally, I would tell my husband this whenever we first got together, because Jelly's so cool. He was just like he knew I was in the game and didn't have a problem with it. Because that's not how he met you, right? No, no. fuck no. My husband is not a trick. Let's just clear this. <laughs> let's clear the air right now, because a lot of people always hear, "Oh, Bunny was a hoe. Was he a trick?" No, my husband is a G. There is no way that my husband. Ha- will ever trick off on a girl jelly i know for a fact you did not meet bunny that way so i'm just clarifying it right now you're <laughs> yeah. not a trick no okay. I'll, I'll get into how jay and i met um but whenever we did first get together you know my husband didn't have money we didn't have the money that we have now you know mm-hmm. and he just told me you know you're not you're not gonna have to be in this for long if you you know, whenever you're ready, come out of it. But me being the strong, independent woman I am, I was like, no, I'm going to make my own money. You're I not, love that. I'm never going to live off of you no matter what I have to do. Um, but yeah, when he first came around, he saw like one night, I think I made like 20 grand and like, he didn't believe me. He was at first, he was like, there's no fucking way you're making this much money. Mm -hmm. And I would just send him videos of like me with the clients and stuff like that of them just handing me just hundreds and thousands of dollars. And he would just be like, dude, this is fucking nuts. Like I didn't even know this world fucking existed. If I was having a bad night, I would go on Tinder and we call it go, we call it going fishing. Go on Tinder, pull a trick off of Tinder, make fucking, you know, 2,500 just for showing up. Right. Just taking his money. So that's what I meant by Robin Hood. <laughs> like, <if> you, <laughs> Yeah, where's the Robin Hood? If you didn't have enough money to sleep with me, I was still going to take whatever money you had. Uh-huh. So even if I just had to sh- show up and say, how you doing? Fucking give you a couple lap dances, you were still going to pay me. So it's like pretty much like, and you know, some dudes would want their money back. And, you know, I've gotten held up in hotel rooms and punched oh by God. tricks before and stuff like that. But, and it's not always beautiful. I don't want to always glamorize it, but. At the same time, it I made a lot of fucking money. Thank so. you. Thank you so much for bringing that up because you listen to my show. I always do a segment, Slew University, where yeah. I try to, you know, teach something. And in this instance, like, I'm not that familiar with it. And so I'm so excited to have you on because you've talked about being a call girl specifically, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Which, what's it? 
diff- like you get Same calls. Thing. It's just a nice name because no, when I <laughs> when nice I think name. of the word prostitute, I think back to biblical times. Yeah, <laughs> like that side thou, of the road. Thou for art thou prostitute? You know, like <laughs> Mary Magdalene days. Like yeah. I just feel like that. It sounds so harsh, you know. Yeah. Whereas I prefer like hooker, hoe, mm-hmm. you know, call girl, working girl, lady yeah. of the night, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, sugaring. Yeah, just yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it's all the same end goal. Yeah, for sure. We're and all just hustling, trying to make a, a dollar. Right, 100%. But I think, especially with TikTok and then OnlyFans, which is an incredible platform. It's insane. What do you mean by that? Like, oh, I, OnlyFans has made me a millionaire. <laughs> like, it's just crazy the amount of money that is on fucking OnlyFans. Okay. That is a game fucking changer. It took me out of the game, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The amount of people I've had on the show that have told me that, and yeah. it's like, Sophia, it's time. Yeah. Like, it's time baby, to, like, I will take there. you under my wing. Come on, baby. I know. I've, I've heard it. Sophia like, Sloot. We'll just put you <laughs> That's your OnlyFans name. <laughs> Sophia Sloot. But there's OnlyFans is, uh, I'm not going to say for the most part, but you can kind of go about OnlyFans however you want in a safe way for a lot of people. Absolutely. But I think there's this whole thing with sex work because we're, becoming more of a progressive society that Mm -hmm. we talk about sex work in a very positive way. And I'm a full supporter of sex work, whether it's track girls, (laughs) sugary, like whatever it is, you know, I fully support it. But I think with TikTok and all of these things, we glamorize and romanticize it where it's like this incredible, amazing thing. And there's really a dark side that a lot of people don't talk about. There's a very, very dark side. I have, there's so many of my girlfriends who are still in the game. Shout out to you guys. I love you so much. Um, There's some of my girls who never made it out the game and they're, they died from being addicts or they died at the hands of their pimp or they Mm. died on a call because a trick flipped out and killed them you know so there there is so much darkness with it but like I I always try to see the silver lining and everything um but it's the truth you know it mentally I think you know because I was sexually abused and I've preached this on my podcast numerous numerous times because I was sexually abused and I was raped when I was younger sex work was my way of taking my power back Mm. it healed so many parts of me And made me feel powerful. Like you can't touch me without paying me. Mm. You know. And a lot of little girls get their innocence taken. And they internalize it. Right. And that follows them through through life. And they become a perpetual victim. Whereas I was like fuck that. No dude's ever going to make me feel like that again. I'm going to make them feel like this. I have the power to say when. No. Leave when I want to. You know like it was just a whole healing journey. And when I was going through it, I didn't realize it Yeah. until after I came out of it. And I was like, holy shit, that's what I was doing subconsciously and didn't even realize it. Yeah. Reclaiming your power and yeah. your innocence in a way. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, not so much, yeah. but like reclaiming yeah, I understand this what thing that saying. was taken away. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just never feeling powerless again, because mm-hmm. when something traumatic like that happens to you, you feel powerless. Yeah. You feel vulnerable. You feel exposed. And you spend your whole life searching how to not feel like that, you Mm -hmm. know? So I think when you do find something that makes you powerful, fucking run with it, dude. And I mean, the plus, the plus side to it was I was making so much fucking money doing it, you know? I think it's a very, very profound thing to say Mm because some people would take that as a negative. Oh, this happened to her. So she did this. Yeah. No, I think if anything, it, it, was empowering for you and helped you kind of reclaim something that was taken yeah do you think I mean would you like suggest to people like that's one way to like deal with the (laughs) trauma or so I would never suggest that because now having a stepdaughter that's 14 I I would could never fucking imagine her ever being in that lifestyle Mm. like she wears fucking booty shorts and I want to freak out you know I'm like no you're not you're not hot for 14 stop doing that (laughs) 14 year olds aren't hot um you know no I don't that was my way of doing it also the game has changed so much Mm -hmm. back when I was doing it it was really taboo people were actually fucking safe 
safer about it. Um, oh, they were safer. In the yeah. Past. Well, I just feel like now it's just like such a fucking free for all and it's so oversaturated and there's so many people in the game. It's just crazy. You know? OK. Whereas back then it was more planned out. You know, if a guy was going to meet up with you, he had an appointment with you fucking weeks in advance. Whereas now it's like it's just different. You know, yes. it's just a different world we live in, too. You know, um, I feel like back then it worked for me. You know, what worked for me is not always going to work for other people. A lot of people aren't as mentally strong as I am to be able to have gone through all that and still, you know, found the positive in it. Yeah. Um, it's, if you're not mentally strong to be able to, I had a couple girls on the podcast one time and the, the, the way that they said it was, if you're not mentally strong enough to get raped and then get back to work the next day, don't get into sex work. Wow. Because that it happens all the time, you know, that's like horrifying. Like that's such a statement. Yeah. But I think it's really important that you point that out because, because we talk about sex work and not more casually, but just more, right. we are more accepting of it. Oh, absolutely. I think women need to know that there's a mental tenacity that you need to have no, for, sure. for it to work for you. You yeah. know what I mean? Absolutely. No, it, you have to be very strong. You have to be pretty much bulletproof. Yeah. And back then when I was doing it, it wasn't so mainstream. So I went through the ringer. I'm yeah. talking like you know people this is when like you know myspace and fucking online was just starting so you know people didn't understand that line of work so i've been called a a hoe a whore fucking prostitute you Mm -hmm. know gold digger just everything that you can think of and if you're not able to stand your ground and be like you know what i'm doing this as a means to an end Mm -hmm. then it'll end up just shattering your whole world you got to be really strong and resilient yeah it's an industry where you need to be strong and resilient like absolutely you just said. it'll eat you alive yeah I, I could totally see that and you mentioned just to back up a little bit you aside from your childhood there was trauma there there was abuse there you were in an abusive relationship mm-hmm. with a, a boyfriend yep and that went on for how long you said so I was with him for about god four and a half years mm-hmm. um And it was one of those, you know how toxic relationships are. Fucking you guys can't fucking stand each other, but the sex is so amazing. The best dick, run away. Toxic. Run away. Toxic dick is the best dick. I know. Love it. I know. It's (laughs) so stupid, but like. (laughs) But it honestly stems from childhood trauma. Mm -hmm. That shit is you know what it, what happens whenever we get older um so yeah it was really bad um and here's the thing I don't want to talk shit about him and I don't want to paint a picture of him being a horrible person because you know there was a time where we were really in love and there was a time where you know I would have done anything for that man yeah and he would have done anything for me it was just two people who had fucked up childhoods who came together and tried to make something work and it didn't yeah, it was very bad. Um, you know, he broke um, all of, he strangled me so bad one night that he burst all the blood vessels in both of my eyes. He broke my orbital bone. He cracked my larynx. Oh my like God. there was just time. There was one time where it was Christmas Eve and it was like our first Christmas Eve together. And we had pulled up to the Rhino in Vegas. It was a strip club. And um, he was like, let's go in here. And I was like, I don't want to spend our first Christmas Eve in a strip club, you know? And he fucking lost his shit. I mean, he beat the fuck out of me in the back of that taxi from the strip club all the way to home. The the, it was so bad that I saw my guardian angel. Wow, it was crazy. Like in the fucking passenger seat, I kept I couldn't understand because I was getting beat up so bad. I couldn't understand why there was somebody who was this big, huge man in the front seat just sitting there facing Mm -hmm. forward. But I could feel kind of like his peace, I guess he was trying to give me while I was in the middle of that. And the taxi driver was just letting him do this because my ex was very intimidating, you know? So this whole time the taxi driver is just driving us home while he's fucking beating the shit out of me. The beating continued into the house. And then weeks later I was like, who was the second guy in the taxi with us? And he's like, there was nobody else in there except for me, you and the taxi driver. 
So wow. yeah, crazy. So I know for a fact that that was my guardian angel just Saved being like, you. you're going to get through this. Like, just hold on. You're going to get through this. Oh my God. Yeah, it was crazy. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm, I'm so sorry that happened to you. It's I, okay. I feel like so many women listening though are in similar situations yeah. or have dealt with situations like that how did you get away well you know with all toxic relationships it's always push and pull you're always gonna go back you're always gonna you know like it it took a really long time he actually had to go to prison for me to get away from him and then what happened was he went to prison in February of 2016 I had met Jay a year before that in 2015 But Jay and I had always stayed in contact. Jay is jelly. We had always stayed in contact. And after my ex went to prison, Jay started hitting me up a lot more. (laughs) He was like, so what's up? (laughs) And, um, you know, he ended up coming down. I had a high rise condo in Vegas and they were going to shoot a bunch of videos. And he came down in July and stayed at my place. And then that's the rest is history. The rest is history. I love that yeah, story. So Jay actually is the one who helped me get away from all of it. Right. Yeah. I, fuck, I wish Jay was here because he I sounds know. fucking incredible. Oh, he's so amazing. You'll he's, love him. Right. And Jay knew about you being call girl or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. How did he feel about that? He, you know, he didn't love it. No man ever wants to be like, yeah, go be a hoe, (laughs) you know, but at the same time, he saw how much money I was making. And when you can't pull a woman away from making hundreds of thousands of dollars without you, right? uh, she's going to tell you to go fuck yourself, Mm -hmm. you know? And I don't think he was scared of me telling me because my husband's not a punk. So I don't think he was scared of me telling him that, but my husband's a hustler. He used to be a a drug dealer before he was a rapper. So he gets it when you're making that kind of street money hand over fist. It's, it's just like, you know, let's roll with it. You never jump off a winning horse. That's what we always say. Yeah. And we didn't have money like how we have now. And then, um, you know, like I said, four years into it, I started the podcast and it, it came to a point after four years where he was just like, babe, you do not have to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. At this point, you're doing it because you like it. You know, (laughs) like, which one is it? Are we, are you going to fucking retire, bitch, or what? Like, your pussy's going to fall off. No, he didn't say that. You're like, no, this is charity, babe. I'm not even getting paid. (laughs) All right. But it was so hard for me to give up my independence. Yeah. So once I gave up that independence, literally, I gave that up in like January of 20. I can't even think 2019. I started the podcast March of 2019 Mm -hmm. or May of 2019 and then just started running with it. And then we ended up doing OnlyFans in April of 2020, which I was so dead set against. And literally, I don't know why I was because it's made me so much fucking money. The first month I made like fucking $75,000 or no, I'm sorry. I made a hundred thousand, right? Yeah. In one month. One month. That is fucking crazy yeah I, tell me about it i was like i didn't know if that many people wanted to see my butthole what? i was excited i was like yes i get to be a hoe again no, I'm just well, kidding. <laughs> you don't have to i don't even know if you can tell me this but like that one month were you having like sex with dudes nope. on your only fans nope that just one? your butthole nope no, i just, didn't even show i don't think we showed nudity right Mm-mm. no the first month it was just like implied nudity yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> I wasn't, I didn't have anything. I had nothing. I had no content. So I was literally just like me, like, hee hee, nipple. You know, like, okay, you know what? <laughs> oh, they'll pay, baby. I'm see? slamming <laughs> my laptop shut right now. I got fucking... you. I'm about to turn Sophia out, baby. <laughs> Please do. That is fucking crazy. Wow. Yeah. No, and it's continued. It's been constant for fucking three years now, right? We've been on almost three, going into three years. Yeah. Wow. Two and a yeah. half years. You're, I mean, you're fucking killing it. And I love, can I, do I call him Jelly or yeah. Daddy or Jay? I mean, he, we like to call him Daddy. Okay. I'm going <laughs> to call him Daddy. So you were still making money by hooking up with men in whatever capacity while you were dating Daddy. Yeah. In the beginning, yes. I had my sugar daddies. I had, so I wasn't like, um, going on as many like dates per se it was like i would only go on big money so like if you wanted to see me you had to spend a bag Mm. i wasn't like out here just fucking collecting you know 2000 2000 2000 it was like you need to give me a lot of fucking money for me to leave my husband to come see you i 
I fucking love that. Would you tell them? I got to leave Oh, yeah. Well, I, we're such you. a public couple. Everybody would see it, you know? Oh, like, okay. Does your husband mind, you know? And I'd be like, well, no, If you're not if you're giving me all of your money. <laughs> no, he doesn't care. He loves when I spoil him with your money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take him shopping yeah. after. I mean, I invested in my husband's first, um, not his first album. Let me not uh, say that. I invested in uh, his Addiction Kills album. I helped him with that. Like, you know, anything he needed custody of his daughter. I helped him with that. And I don't like bringing that stuff up. The only reason why I'm saying this is because he said it in the Burt Kreischer interview. I would never like say that publicly because I don't need the kudos. I know what I've done for my husband. Right. But like that money was always used to help us get to where we needed to be. It well, was not like I was like hoarding money and just. Yeah. yeah. Well, also people are out here calling you a sugar baby and like you. Gold started, digger. You married. <laughs> yeah. Gold yeah. digger. And you dated him for his money. I mean, it's yeah. like actually women yeah. make money yeah and that's not always the case I think it's so crazy that people don't realize that women can make fucking money on their own mm-hmm. like it's the weirdest shit you think it's every, so crazy think every blonde with big tits is a fucking gold digger like no it's so weird and that's another reason why I started my podcast because I was so fucking tired of people trying to shame me and and be like oh jelly rolls wife is a hoe and you know, they would post about it and stuff like that. And finally, I just told Jay, I was like, I'm going to start this podcast because I've always wanted my own radio talk show. Mm-hmm. Even as a kid, I used to fucking pretend my name was Lacey Carter <laughs> and I fucking would record on my little yellow fucking boom box and fucking have my own little radio shows, <laughs> you know. And so I told Jay, I was like, I just want to tell my story. And he was like, go, go, baby, go do it. He's like, I back you. And then that's how this all fucking started. And I love that it's dumb blonde that you yeah. called it dumb blonde. Mm-hmm. Cause that's you just taking the bullshit that people say about you and fucking owning it and be yeah. like, yep. Dumb blonde podcast, dumb blonde production. Yep. That's the name of your production company. Yep. It's like a slap in the face. Like, fuck you. It's similar to the, yeah. I have options like my merch line. Cause yep. a bunch of people are talking shit on a, TikTok I did and it's like I love taking the negative narrative and making money off of it yeah absolutely 100 my fucking whole repertoire (laughs) (laughs) I love that that is my jam don't say something you don't want me to make money off of (laughs) because I will I will fucking throw that shit on a t-shirt and go facts I've had gold digger t-shirts I've had everything that you can think of that people have thrown at me it's also uh to pay homage to one of the most amazing business women woman in the industry and that's Dolly Parton because Mm. you know she fucking has dealt with so much bullshit people have came yeah. against her and she's a fucking icon and a lucrative businesswoman so she has a song called dumb blonde too so it was very tongue-in-cheek of course mm-hmm. for what you said then it was also paying homage to dolly too i fucking love dolly yeah me too is she from nashville no. she's from uh severeville which is right up the street probably like four hours away okay because mm-hmm. i just i like i am into country i am Yay. into dolly now that i'm in nashville i'm like I are want. you gonna go get some cowgirl boots or what's up i need you to tell me where the fuck to go you gotta get some lucases right if you're gonna do lucases uh, Luca- is it lucasi or luke i listen i'm a west coast bitch so let me not pronounce this <laughs> the wrong way is i don't give a fuck what they're called i'm ready to drop money on what? it <laughs> none of my crew is from nashville either i got my managers from the fucking west coast we're desperately looking around the room no one can yeah. tell us no, i think it's lucchese it is what you need and the, you know what here we'll call daddy while we're on the podcast really quick. oh my god yes let's call daddy we'll which face. by the way the fact that daddy's like so supportive of, oh yeah he's amazing dude right we can only date strong men yeah no he's my husband is such a boss, dude. We're public hoes. We can only deal with strong <laughs> All right. guys. He's he's in a writing sesh with Brantley Gilbert right now, so he might not answer, but he'll call me right back. Okay, ask him what's more important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Daddy, we're on air right now. We need you. Hold on, I'll text him. People are... My- oh, I forgot. He's at a fucking... Um, that fucking writer's thing. Oh, the award. One. Yeah, mm. so my husband just went number one on... I can't even remember fucking. Okay, daddy. I know. He's doing so good. I'm so proud of him. Like, it's so fucking crazy, man, to just see how far he's come since I've been with him. 
my husband's been doing this for fucking 20 years, you know? Wow. So for him to finally start getting the notoriety that he deserves, it's just like the most heartwarming thing. So he's at a ceremony right now that I wasn't told about until fucking Sunday <laughs> that I should have been at. But um, it's honoring his number one and the writers for, uh, is it Son of a Sinner? Which one? I don't know. He has, he's he's winning awards left and right. Yeah, no, it's crazy. Track. He had Dead Man Walking was the number one rock song. He has Son of a Sinner, which is on the country charts right now. And then is there another one? I forget. So he's been doing it for 20 years. When did he like hit his break? Like when did he like this last uh, 2020 is probably That's when we fucking... oh save me. Uh, 2020 is when. So, you know, as a family, we sat down and we were like, OK, are we going to let this um pandemic fuck with our family and our funds because he mm. couldn't tour and I wasn't working anymore mm -hmm. so we sat down and we were like okay we're just gonna fucking start shooting out content and fucking filming left and right um we started the only fans he started uh he dropped an album I think um god he's gonna fucking kill me <laughs> was it beautiful disaster he dropped I think he dropped beautiful disaster during the pandemic which has saved me on it or was it broken ballads of the broken i don't fucking know <laughs> we just we filmed so much content and we just went fucking balls to the wall to where 2020 we both blew up wow like it was i started a tiktok i had fought my manager mimi was like bitch get the fuck on tiktok i was like i am not 12 and gonna shake my ass to fucking <laughs> songs on tiktok i'm not doing this i had that same hurdle i'm like mm. no but and then i got on it and i think we went viral like the first fucking this is the second um profile we've had they took my last one they'll um, probably take this one too oh no they did they took it a couple weeks ago okay <laughs> <laughs> and they gave it back thank god thank you tiktok god thank you tiktok um but yeah we went on tiktok we went viral we did the only fans and my husband's song save me ended up going like platinum and just create it's been yeah. a snowball since 2020 it's been so hard to keep up like you guys are a fucking power couple oh i love him i mean He's i was best. here for i literally touched down in nashville got to my airbnb and there you guys both are on the tv yeah. and i'm like okay <laughs> shout out brantley we love we love <laughs> brantley brantley gilbert's a sweetheart um yeah it's just been insane and now he's got this he starts uh his tour with shine down and co wetzel and brantley all starts at the end of august i love that yeah. and you know what we need to do bunny is yeah. you and i for our podcast collab tour we're yeah. gonna open up for, holes and for souls daddy. baby <laughs> yeah, we're gonna open up for daddy <laughs> let's do it oh he would love that it's gonna be a whole big collab <laughs> let's do it baby um, i'm so down so bunny i want to get into my listener question yeah. stories advice before we do i have one super random question but like i need to know for me and okay. for the people listening oh god i'm scared the men in nashville oh trash <laughs> <laughs> okay. say less so we're not into that no they um, can't be worse than the men in vegas because I, I know the say. men in vegas yeah i was just about to say nashville boys are a different breed mm. they are not as bad as the dudes in Vegas, but I feel like the dudes in Vegas, what you see is what you get with them. Whereas okay. in Nashville, it's more of a mask. Mm. So I don't know. I mean, if you're just here to have fun, just be here for a good time, not for a long time, baby. Okay. You know, like just so like, get it up, not, get it in, get it on and get it out. Get in, get on, get out. So <laughs> yeah. they're not husband material, but they're. I mean, I married fun. a Nashville boy, so but we have been through hell together. Yeah. It hasn't always been fucking peaches and roses and fucking butterflies and unicorn farts like it's, <laughs> we had to fight to get to where we are so I mean I think that with any fucking population of males you're gonna have to sip through sift through the funk to find yeah. you know the princes so. and that's everywhere yeah for sure except I will say I think Los Angeles could be the worst uh, LA has lost its glitter Mm -mm, I, we were I just can't. there and I was just like this is not the LA I remember no I feel like everybody's walking around with no souls it's terrifying yeah it's really it's weird. really really scary really fucking weird okay bunny this has been such an incredible fucking conversation and interview <laughs> I want to get into my sleuths question stories advice and I feel yeah. like you're the perfect person to do it with let's so do it. let's start with the first one this girl wrote in and said, my first cousin and I have been hooking up for a year. It's legal in our state. 
(laughs) We're past the stage of having kids. We have been attracted to each other since we were kids and finally acted on it one year ago. Our family will freak the fuck out should we end it. Is first cousin blood? (laughs) Yes. Oh. And when she says that they're past the stage of having kids, does that mean they have one? No, I think that, that has to mean they're... T- too old right oh okay yeah possibly okay i wasn't i was like were they having one like so happening? these are like first cousins blood cousins in their 50s God. fucking i mean i feel like didn't jerry lee lewis do it <laughs> fucking didn't he fucking sleep with his first cousin i mean people do it and i hate that it's like you know love is love you can't help who you fucking love but god dang <laughs> i know it's like what's the right answer here no i want to say love is love but i I don't know. I think I draw the line with first cousin. Yeah. I, I don't know. I've I don't never looked so. at one of my cousins and been like, mm, you no, know, like, right. <laughs> ever. No, you know what it is for me? It's if they would have randomly met each other to supermarket and right. didn't know they and were related. Know, I could believe that more. Yeah. Then I, I would like be this is premeditated. Well, she says, she says, we've been attracted to each other since we were kids. So Pre- they knew it was a no, no from mm. the beginning. That means they messed around as kids. Too, yeah. Probably. They played house and shit. So Bunny and I, we say it's time to end it. Yeah. That's premeditated incest. 100%. Where do they live? Alabama? <laughs> they said it's legal. Who? I have no fucking clue. No offense to my uh, Alabama no we but, love Alabama yeah we just, is, is that that's legal out in Alabama isn't it I, I don't know like, I Alabama no I think even Utah has a rule that actually I don't even fucking remember <laughs> there's we don't some, we're not up to date on our incest there's rules. some loophole <laughs> where you, yeah there's some loophole where you can marry your cousin but if you guys would have like you know serendipitously ran yeah. into each other fine but yeah. you guys knew you guys knew <laughs> Okay. (laughs) All right. Next. I'm so excited to (laughs) to read this one. (laughs) Sophia, I recently found an album of 7,000 pictures of naked girls and models on my boyfriend's phone. He said he doesn't know any of them personally and wouldn't keep pictures of people he knows. But at the end of the day, 7,000 seems insane. I told him it's not okay, and he says he doesn't use them to jerk off. He just has a collection. So he's a fucking serial killer. (laughs) (laughs) Is that what we're getting out here? He fucking stalks women and saves their pictures? Right. Are these, like, pictures, like, off of a computer or? Right. So then she says the latest ones he saved were literally from today. Today. Along with that, I found screenshots of girls, TikTok profiles, and he also claims to not have a reason for having them. I'm having trouble navigating this. And do you think this is normal? Love the podcast. So we don't know what kind of pictures. It doesn't matter. 7,000. Like she needs to get out why she still has her heartbeat. Like this dude sounds like he's like profiling women or... I mean, if they're not nude and he's like saving these pictures of women and their everyday activities, that's fucking serial killer behavior. Wait, first of all, why does he have to save them? Like, why does he need like serial killer behavior? The Little Mermaid, Ariel, like her little collection (laughs) of things. Like, why does he need to collect these pictures like a pick collector? That's what I call them. So on Internet weirdos are pick. We call them pick collectors. And Mm. that's what they do. They save girls pictures. But it's because they're doing either jacking off with them or they're fucking doing like stalking. What maybe? else do you do besides? Yeah. Well, he told her that he's not jacking off to them. So what is oh, the so collection it must be, for? It must be the truth that he said because he told her he's not doing it right. Because <laughs> <laughs> we know men are so honest, right? He just has a shrine for absolutely no fucking reason. At least he didn't say it was his friends. <laughs> Thank you. At yeah. least he was honest yeah. enough to say they were his. Right. Well, I mean, how do you lie? Seven thousand <laughs> pictures, like. Bro, the how I want to know the timeline that you accumulated those. Right. Like, how long did it take him to accumulate those? And the fact that she looked and he had some from earlier that day. Yeah, that's girl. Weird. Your question is, I'm having trouble navigating this. And do I think it's normal? I don't think it's normal. Navigate your way the fuck out of that relationship. One hundred percent. No, that's that's some weird fucking serial killer behavior. Yeah. Strange. Very strange. You catch him watching porn, fine. A couple like nudes from his exes, fine. 7,000, that's an issue. I like my men obsessed with me. So if Mm -hmm. you've got a picture of fucking 7,000 other women in your, that's too much competition. Like they can have you. Yeah. You know, I totally agree. I hope you're fucking 
little picture sales <laughs> keep you warm at night you know i want to know what iphone he has and like what storage yeah he's got uh, the terabyte plan. <laughs> he's got like the fucking the one fuck? terabyte or whatever it's <laughs> how called. do you carry that around he like has a fucking hard drive attached yeah. okay next um, my girl is into the idea. Oh, this is a guy that wrote in. My girl's into the idea of a threesome, but we are having a hard time finding our unicorn. Mm-hmm. Any advice on how to corral one? So, Bunny, you know what a unicorn is, obviously. Yeah, that's, yeah absolutely. Which is you find a third mm-hmm. to hook up with that's going to, like, respect all the rules. They're not, like, attached to you guys in any way. And they're, like, the perfect person to have a threesome with. Yeah, which you're never going to find that. I feel like everybody nowadays puts a label. Like, there's a fucking label for everything, you know? Back in the day, back in my day, when I was doing threesomes, <laughs> it was just some random you met at the bar and you guys are having fun, you know? Mm-hmm. When you put too much pressure on the situation, the universe is going to pick up on that. Mm-hmm. It's not going to happen because, you know... You want somebody to respect all the rules. You want your boyfriend to not touch them or you want your boyfriend to pay more attention to you or, you know, like there's just too many rules. Like, right. Having a threesome is supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be technical. It's not supposed to be analytical. It's just a fucking fly by the seat of your pants, fucking pull a bitch home and fucking just have fun with her and don't let the door hit her on the way out. You know, Wait, I fucking love that perspective because yeah. a lot of people are out here saying you need to have the boundaries. You need to have the conversation laid out. Uh, he can fuck you, but he can't fuck her. She can only suck his dick. And it's like there's all these little things. So you know? the only rule I ever have with any of my dudes during threesomes is I, you're not allowed to come in them. You can come on them, just not in them. Which is fair because you're like, yeah. let's not have well, a... We don't want that bonding moment. Yeah, happening. yeah, yeah. You know, that... And as far as like laying down ground rules, just talk to your dude, you know? Like, don't be a fucking nag about it and be like, no, you're not doing this, you're not doing this. Just be like, you know... I would be more comfortable with it if you didn't come in her and you only came on her or, Mm -hmm. you know, if whatever rule it is that you have, but you don't want to make it to where it's not fun. Right. When you have 10 rules, like the the 10 commandments going in and it's like, fuck, I forgot what rule. (laughs) Like fucking right hand on red, (laughs) left hand on yellow. Like like you're playing fucking naked twister and shit. That's not fun. You know, like you want to just have fun with it. It's just live in the moment, Mm -hmm. you know, like don't fucking keep, put rules on it because then that just takes the fun out of it and it's stressful for everybody it's not fun yeah I I actually totally agree with that and I think the girl or the guy that you guys try to bring into yeah. your fucking bedroom they'll catch on if there's too many rules yeah, but, you're yeah. like so we just have to brief you um <laughs> you can't suck his dick but you can't get fucked yeah and you can eat me out but like we can't make out it's and like, no eye contact yeah. <laughs> you know like just weird shit like you just right. can't do that just have fun with it and of course have ground rules with your partner mm-hmm. before then and then just tell the girl you know before you guys get get it on or whatever hey we're gonna use a condom or you know let's just have fun but your man gets you all the time yeah the whole point of having a threesome is so he can fuck another bitch and get it out of his system like okay don't Amen. deprive him of the one shot that he gets yeah. of not cheating on you and just right. having sex in front of you like make you know reward him for actually fucking being a good, a good boy That's yeah how i feel about it i love that yeah you're why go into a threesome with your boyfriend and be like your eyes need to be closed you can't fuck her yeah, like, what's that's the weird. point that's weird it's like it's at that point you're just doing the threesome to appease him and yeah. it's not appeasing him because you're not even letting him enjoy it and the, the thing is is if you are not comfortable with a threesome don't fucking do it yes if you do not agree to something that you don't think that you a mentally cannot handle mm-hmm. and two physically cannot be a part of without fucking making it an uncomfortable situation right right so do you and jay slash jelly slash daddy do you guys do threesomes you guys are oh yeah down with that. yeah we slowed down during the pandemic because shit got scary but mm-hmm. you know and here's the thing my husband and i we've had numerous threesomes we've had a couple foursomes but here's the thing we're just at a point in our relationship now where it's like if my husband's on tour and there's a, a girl there that wants to have sex right, with him, right, right. all they have to do is DM me. Like a lot of the girls are so respectful. Like I love our following because literally they're like family, but they'll be like, Hey, I want to come home with you guys. And they'll DM me. They don't DM him that shit. They DM oh. me and they always come to me about it. And I if I can, that. there's a couple girls that I've sent to his shows, you know, like, Hey baby, th- I, this girl right here wants to fuck. And he'll be like, yes or no. Mm-hmm. And my husband is bougie. He turns bitches down. Like <laughs> I'm like, fucking 
and the only way we turn him down is face down. And he's like, I don't know, baby. You know, I just, you know, and I'm just like, well, you're a dude. Stick your dick in it and fucking yeah. carry on, you know? And he's just like, no, not tonight. You you're know? like, I should be like the picky one over here. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we do. We have a really cool thing where we just, you know, mm-hmm. we love each other. And my husband knows I'm a highly sexual individual. He knows I love young cabana boys. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, we just have a, my only one rule with my husband is, is tell me first. Yeah. Do not let some girl DM me and tell me something about my husband when, you know, you could have told me first. I love that. And then my husband's rule is I don't want to know what you do. <laughs> That's if always you how fucking it is. Sleep with a cabana boy, get it out of your system and make sure it doesn't come to our front door. Uh huh. I love how it's the cabana boy specifically. Yeah. Like I just imagine you like at your house with the pool yeah. and he's like wearing a little speedo oh, cleaning out the. Where's he I at? I'm fucking cabana boy <laughs> auditions. <laughs> I fucking love that. Okay, bunny. This was so incredible. Hey. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story because you are just incredible like you you are a testimony to how you can completely turn your life around you know and there's a silver lining to everything where can they find you you can find just google bunny xo you can find me on instagram it's x omg it's bunny tiktok x omg it's bunny bunny xo on youtube i mean i'm just i'm everywhere and if you can't find me just type in jelly roll and i'm usually right attached to his hip <laughs> type in jelly roll her yeah. tiktok is fucking incredible and dumb blonde podcast yeah. and listen to my podcast we drop every other wednesday um dumb blonde podcast you can find me on apple you can we have a patreon what else, Mimi? What am I contractually Only obligated fans. to say? Oh, yeah. You guys want to see my butthole? Just <laughs> <laughs> find me. It's a bunny. What is my fucking OnlyFans? It's bunny VIP on OnlyFans. Um, great you know, name. It's a great time over there. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. $100,000 the first month. Yeah. Great time. I, I bust it wide open over there, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Come and get it, daddies. I or even the that. girls, too. I love the girls. Yes. I love that so much. You have more guys or girls, by the way. I, you know what? It's like even. I have a lot of girls that are on there and I have a lot of guys. So, I mean, I love when girls are on there because they're always so just empowering and loving and mm-hmm. just like, bitch, you, you know, we just give each other high fives. They send me their nudes and stuff like that. I, I love it. I love that. Yeah. They're like, I love your butthole, but also you as a person. Yeah. The guys are like, maybe it's the butthole. You're like, no, you know what? It's crazy. I have a lot of guys that hit me up on there that listen to my podcast. Wow. Yeah. It's crazy. That's so yeah. interesting. So well, weird. I fucking love that. Thank you so much for coming on. Dude, thank you and for having me. I love, I, I love everything you're doing. I think you're a fucking powerhouse and I am so proud to just be a little fucking (laughs) smeck of your journey. So (laughs) thank you. Thank you so much. This was incredible. I'm definitely having you back on. Like I will be back in Nashville and I will be having a slumber party with you. Let's do it. Okay. No, you're going to fucking be uh, a a judge at the Horlympics. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 100% girls taking down hot dogs. Oh, they fucking, they fucking double sided, double stuffed fucking hot dogs in their pussies. It was crazy. They were fucking (laughs) squirting 13 feet in the air. The Horlympics is on my Patreon, right? So what is our Patreon? Dumb Blonde Podcast? Dumb Blonde Unrated dot com. So if you want to see. 13 foot squirt. It was insane. I'll have to send you the episode so you can see it tonight. That's some Ripley's Believe It or Not You guys can eat like popcorn and watch it. I would love that. Some girl got fisted for the first time. Wow. I didn't even know it was possible to stick a fist in a hoot nanny like that. It was (laughs) right in front of me. (laughs) Okay. Well, you know what? That's fucking incredible. I need to be a judge and I am going to. Yes, please. It would be hilarious. (laughs) Buddy, thank you so much for coming on and we will talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Bye, guys.